Welcome to another episode of Heart to Heart. We're here today with Steve and Ron, who have been working here for plenty of years on the Westwood, and we're filming this on a cold February day. You can see that in the backdrop. It's not the nicest of days, but our season will soon be upon us. Are you both looking forward to getting started? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And obviously, hopefully the weather's better by then. How long do you start the countdown until the next season? Are you counting down the days already? We've started the countdown just after Christmas. <laughs> and then we know that the first training day is April the 4th. So we're on our way up tonight, we're just saying we'll soon be coming back up here yeah. for the first training day. It'll be fine. And then a week after we're back <laughs> racing, which is a really good start. A good start, April. And now, hopefully, the weather will be good. Plenty of racing, good racing, good horses. Yeah. And we enjoy the day. Yeah. And Steve, what what kind of stands out in the season for you? Obviously, we kick off in April, but what race there for you is one that really excites you, or just the days in general? Well, all the days, but Hillary Mead, that, that is the... We get the top-class horses, and, yeah. Hillary Mead, like, oh. Nice competitive race in that. That's, yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And Ron, let's roll back the years. Before you was, before we started filming, we was talking about your younger days when you was playing football. Do you want to talk us through the training regime you had up here on the Westwood? The earliest I remember was when was, we was at all training here from the school. And we used to start off and run halfway around the course. Then we used to do the grandstand step, we used to call it the, the torture chamber, where you had to run up once, then hop up on your, run down, hop up on your right foot, run down, hop up on your left foot, on each set of steps along the grandstands. When you come to the last one, you had to run it, do it backwards, which was very hard <laughs> and very cruel by the trainer who made us do it. <laughs> and Steve, was you there at the time? No, I used to stand and watch you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's obviously go back to some of your earliest memories before you started working here at Royston, Steve. When was kind of the first time you came up to oh, Berkeley? Oh, the uh, late 50s. I used to come up with my dad. My dad used to bring me up. And that was when you used to have the silver ring. Uh, we'd go, on the, go in the silver ring. And which was very enjoyable, mm. enjoyable days, and that that would be late fifties. So I'd only be maybe ten or eleven, you know. Mm. So yeah, it was, yeah. And was it love at first sight? Have you oh, always loved yeah. it since well, coming back? I always loved racing. Yeah, really, really into racing. Yeah, yeah. I think that's top sport for us. <laughs> and for you, on what when you're not playing football here, what was your earliest memory um, coming up on a race day? The earliest memories was going to the races because there was that many local trainers in Beverly. Uh, there was Snowy Gray, yeah. uh, Pat, Taylor. Pat Taylor, Jeff Tom, yeah. Al Smith, and they all had the local horses that used to come up, yeah. which made it more interesting, yeah. because you had, the, you had the good horses coming from a field, but you, you was always into the, yeah. the local horses, yeah. which made it a really enjoyable day. The earliest exciting day was my brother-in-law, had his own horse here and it won Persian Fountain, mm. which was a big family thing and we really enjoyed that night. It's uh, 33 to 1. That's him. <laughs> and I'm sure you had a few little pounds each way on it. And we had a few little pounds each way on it, we certainly did. <laughs> yeah, all the local jockeys like Frank and Arton, Frank and Arton right. and Brian Henry, yeah, well, really good jockeys. Mm. In, the, in the day. Nicky yeah. 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 Nicky, yeah. Yeah. Um, Robbie Williams, Robert Williams. Eddie Hardy was a good good northern jockey in the town. He yeah. used to ride a lot with me. Yeah. And I'm sure you've seen some amazing horses over the years at Beverly. If you had one on, or maybe a couple that just stick out to you that you have fond memories with. The two that stick out for me was Gonna Be, which was just short of a, well, just short of a classic horse, really. Mm. It won some big races mm. and down south. Mm. And the other was Rapid Lad, which he used to watch up here, which was horses for courses, they say. Mm. That, that was some hard. In fact, we've got a bar named after it. Yeah. So that's how yeah. Yeah. well known it was in this area. Yeah. 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 And for you, Steve? Yeah, going to be, that, that's one of the top ones. 
I think he went on and won the Benson went on and won the Benson and Andrews for it left Jeff Todd did, yeah. and I think Henry Cecil, the current command and man's correct. He went to Henry Cecil and won the big race at Yard for Benson and Andrews. So it was good class ours. Yeah, I've seen a lot of good horses over the years, you know. Mm, yeah, plenty stand out. The likes yeah. of Attraction have gone on yeah, to much better as right. well. Yeah. So let's just get into a bit about more about your job. Obviously, you live to live next door to each other. You work pretty much in the same space. You're on what is kind of both of your jobs on a race day, essentially? Well, the race day, is my job is on one side of the course, which is on the inside, where it's the uh, picnic area. So my job is to make sure that people can, who have passes can come across and know they have to have to obviously stay where they are. Before the lockdown, we also have a transfer charge, which used to cover nine pound. So people could actually pay the nine pound and transfer across. But now they can't have that. But my job basically is to make sure that no drinks go across the course because that's a danger to the horses and if they drop them on the grass. Uh, Steve's job at the other side is, very, is same, nearly the same. same. It's the same. Yeah. Uh, we have to give, we, we give tickets out, we give armbands out, wristbands, mm -hmm. so that people actually know who can go across the course and who can't mm -hmm. go across. On really busy days, we have security helping us mm -hmm. to control them. Yeah. Yeah. And Steve, I think everyone's a bit jealous of you. You have the perfect view of looking down the course. It's not a bad place to be stood no, at work, is it? No, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want to swap it. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> and these two love a bet as well, don't you? Oh, there's, yeah, there's yeah. always a race card and there's always a little tip floating around yeah. in the air. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we get the off. We, we get little, the off tip. No, we do a little play spot, don't we? We do a play yeah. spot, yeah. Before racing starts. Yeah. Just give it a bit more interest. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, one thing that most people say about Beverly is just kind of the friendly atmosphere among all the staff. Absolutely, is that yeah. something that you find and you enjoy? Obviously, you yeah. two have known each other, but everyone seems to get on so well. Yeah. I think it's like a family. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's a small a race course with a family of workers, mm. and everybody knows they're a job. And it, it, it's nothing's out of place. If anybody's off, somebody can step into their role as well, mm. which is a big help for Fiona. So she can just ring you up and say, do you mind moving to a certain area? And we say, yeah. I think I've been to about four or five different areas over the years. And uh, it pays to, well, we call it multi-skilling, mm. but not to that extent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and obviously obviously, our new motto is kind of heart and soul. Um, so many people, including you, pour your heart and soul into that. And to be in the top 10 US courses in the country, that must be kind of special for you guys who obviously come here 19 or 20 times a season and always kind of put your best foot forward. Well, we're polite to people and, you know, show people where we didn't go get food and, you know, I mean, it's just all mucking in together, that really yeah. teamwork. I um, think a lot of it's personal, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the personal touches that they like. People do come up and compliment, compliment us for the things that we've done and say, especially when, the, when it's raining, and they see us stood there in the rain, and they come up and say, I couldn't do your job stood there in the <laughs> rain, but it's part and parcel of the racing. Yeah. So it is, it is what it is. Yeah, definitely. And of course, you guys and so many others here just go above and beyond. Um, obviously, you've been working here a while. Um, have you got any funny stories or interesting stories that stand out? Um, obviously, you're de dealing with a lot of people. Um, and on Ladies Day, you tell me how much you enjoy it being busy and seeing lots of people. Anything stand out? I think the biggest day is the ladies' day. Yeah. This really stands out. Uh, so the things we couldn't tell you what they say to us. <laughs> but what we have to do is we put that personal touch on as well. And we realise that they've had a lot to drink and it's been a, a long day. So we tend to try and be calm and let them get away with some things, most probably that the next morning they wish they'd never said. Yeah, and for you, Steve, after Ladies' Day, is it always a good night's sleep? Absolutely. <laughs> and especially Ladies' Day, it's, it starts off pretty quiet. And then as the day goes on, it just gets louder and louder. And <laughs> about three o'clock, it's bedlam into it. 
I've got more drinks down near my gate because I won't let them take them across. Yeah. I, I could open a little bar down there. <laughs> yeah. Might be one for next season, we'll have to wait and see. Um, obviously, looking forward to next year, um, how many years will it have been you're working here each? I think next year's my sixth. And then we'll go uh, Obviously, we lost the years with the lockdown. Mm. So the, this yeah. coming season will be my sixth season working at Beverly. Yeah, and if you had to say your favourite thing about working at Beverly, what would it be? Working with you, would you like? Oh, that's the right <laughs> answer. I'll give you the money after. Thanks a lot for that. <laughs> and for you, Ron? <laughs> I think it's just because we're a good team. Mm. Yeah. And everybody, everybody gets on with each other, and that's the that's what makes it such a good course yes, to come to, and a friendly course, yeah. Yeah. and everybody's equal in the team. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And obviously, twenty twenty four should be a big year. Hopefully, we'll be winning, um, being the top ten US courses for the third time. In terms of, I know you've kind of already answered this, but what kind of are you looking forward to most? Is it the race, and is it getting catching up with everyone? What would it be? It would be catching up yeah. with the team again. Yeah. And uh, all the bookies and everybody. We, you know, we have a good match. We have a good match to the bookies. Yeah. Everybody's, everybody works as, they all come together as a team. Yeah. Everybody talks to each other. And I think we all this night kicks off soon as the training day comes. Yeah. And then we see if we've got any new faces in the team. Mm. And we all try to help them as best we can. Mm. Just to sum up, Steve and Ron, is they've actually double checked when the training day is. So it is on the 4th of April. I'm sure you're looking forward to it. Um, and we'll see you to kick off our season on the April the 17th. So yeah. thanks a lot for your time. Yeah, that's a brilliant season. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Thanks a lot. Yeah.